Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today we're going to be working on finding the measurements of our special parallelograms using the theorems that we're going to be working on for today. In some geometry problems, we are learning how to be critical thinkers because most of the times looking or finding the measurements of some of the polygons that we're working on is found by using the theorems, definitions of our parallelograms or polygons that would help us in writing the equation or expression that will help us find the missing parts of our polygons. Or in this case, parallelograms and that is what we're going to be talking about today those special parallelograms and we're going to be finding the measurements of those parts by just using the theorems and definitions of these polygons that we're going to be working on for today and what are those special polygons specifically special parallelograms we have rhombus and by definition a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So this is an example of a rhombus and by satisfying its definition, we need, I mean, the sides of our rhombus will be congruent, which means all those sides will have the same length or sizes. So rhombus in my head, when I visualize it, it's basically just a square, but we slant it. So we slant the slide, uh, I mean the sides of a square and now we have a rhombus and we have now congruent sides but not congruent angles for this particular special parallelograms. And the next special parallelogram is a rectangle. And we know what a rectangle is, but we also need to know that in a rectangle, all four corners of our rectangles are congruent and they are all right angles. So that is the special property of a rectangle. And for a square, the special power of a square is that in a square, the corners are congruent and the sides are also congruent. And another special um, property of a square is that their corners or their angle A, B, C, D will be equal to 90 degrees because they are all right angles. So these are the properties of our three special parallel par parallelogram, <laughs> rhombus, rectangle, and square. And we're going to be using that so that we'll be able to answer geometry problem similar to this one. So we are seeing a rhombus right here because it says here in the problem that we have a rhombus A, B, C, D, and we need to find the value of X and the find to find the measurement of each of the side. So let's bring out the property of a rhombus, which means the sides of a rhombus are congruent, which is important because we know that line segment AD, which is represented by an expression 5x minus 7, and line segment BC, which is 3x plus 5, can be equated because we know that they are congruent. So since they have the same measurement, let's use that clue so that we'll be able to find the measurement of our sides. So we know that line segment AD is congruent to line segment DC. And we know in our given problem that line segment AD is not an actual measurement, but an expression, 5x minus 7. And since it's congruent to DC, we can equate DC, which is represented by 3x plus 5. And from here, now that we have our algebraic equation, we can now solve it by, I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides so that I'll have 2x minus 7 equals 5. And by adding 5 on, I mean, adding 7 on both sides, we'll have 2x is equal to 12. And now we have x, which is equal to 6. And with that, we'll be able to find the, the measurement of our parallelogram because we know that this measurement, forgive my line, but we know that this measurement is not a unit of measurement, but an expression, which is ad equal to 5x minus 7. And we know that this line segment is also an expression which is equal to 3x plus 5. 
represented by line segment DC, which is 3x plus 5. So all you need to do here is to replace x by 6, and we'll be able to find the measurement of the sides that we're looking for. So let's replace all those variables with the variable x that we have found, which is equal to 6. So now we're ready to find the measurement of AD, which is represented by 5x minus 7 by replacing x with 6. We're able to solve that line segment AD is equal to 23 millimeters. And since this is a rhombus, which means all sides are equal, it's safe to say that DC, CB, and AB are all equal to 23 degrees. And if you want to verify it, let's use line segment DC, which is 3x plus 5. Let's see if it's equal to 23 if we replace x by 6. And 3x or 3 times x is 18 plus 5, which is equal to 23. Therefore, Ooh. our measurement for AD and DC are same, which is 23 millimeters, which means AB will also be 23 and BC will also be 23 because it is a rhombus, and in a rhombus, all sides are congruent. So that is our first special parallelogram for today, and we're going to be working on some other special properties of our special parallelogram that will even help us more because the more information we know about the shapes or polygons that we have, the more clues we have that we can use in solving some of uh, the polygons that we are working on in geometry. So what are these theorems? The first theorem is about the diagonals of a rhombus. According to the first theorem, the diagonals of the rhombus are perpendicular to each other, which means line segment AC, line segment BD, its intersection will form a 90 degree 90 degree angle because they are perpendicular. So that is our first theorem. The second theorem is about the angles of our rhombus given by our perpendicular bisector. That gives us the opportunity to know that one and two are congruent because line segment AC is a bisector, which means it cuts the angles into two congruent parts. So 1 and 2 are congruent, 3 and 4 are congruent, 6 and 5 are congruent, and angle 7 and 8 are congruent. But wait, there's more. And we also know if we're going to be using our lesson from the previous geometry problem about parallel lines cut by a transversal. If we extend AD and we extend BC, we now have a transversal line which is represented by this line and we are producing alternate interior angles and corresponding angles which means angle 1 and 2, they are the same and at the same time, 5 and 6 will have the same measurement as angle 1 and 2 because of that property. And, of course, with its opposite bisector, 3, 4, and 7, 8 will also share the same measurements in this theorem about rhombus. And for our last theorem, it's about rectangle. We know that in a rectangle, our corners are congruent, but when it comes to its diagonals, for a rectangle, those diagonals lengths are congruent, which means the measurement of line segment AC is the same as the measurement of line segment BD. And we're going to be using these theorems so that we can complete some of the problems that we're going to be working on in this next shape. And in this next parallelogram or quadrilateral, specifically a rectangle RSBF, we are given SF is 2x plus 15 and RB is 5x minus 12 and we're going to find the length of those diagonals. And what do we know about the diagonals of a rectangle? The last theorem states that they are congruent so that means SF and BR or RB will be congruent and when it's congruent, we'll be able to use this theorem to find the value of x of our geometric figure. And how are we going to do that? We know from the theorem that SF is congruent 
to RB. And we know that SF is equal to 2x plus 15. And we know that RB is equal to 5x minus 12. So with this theorem, we can equate 2x plus 15 to 5x minus 12. And from here, we can now solve the value of x by, of course, we can start by subtracting 2x on both sides. And then adding 12 on both sides. And now we have 2x equal to 15 plus 12. And what is 2x equal to 15 and 12? By equating SF and RB, we're able to find it by adding this two together, which is equal to 27, and by, I'm sorry, five minus two is not two, it's supposed to be three. So that is my mistake. Good thing that I have my slides right here and my cheat sheet. So I know that my x is an integer, which is 27 divided by three equal to nine. So this is my value of x, which is equal to nine because three x all over three is one and 27 over three is equal to nine. And now we're ready to find the value of our diagonals. And to be able to do that, all we need to do is to replace x by nine. So now we have two times nine plus 15. And we have rb, which is five times nine minus 12. And once we find those values, we'll be able to solve the sides or the diagonals that we are looking for in this rectangle. So by further simplifying our work, RB is 5x minus 12. Therefore, 5 times 9 minus 12 is equal to 33. So RB, th that this diagonal right here, is equal to 33 units. And since we know that they are congruent, I mean RB is congruent to SF, SF should also be 33 degrees without even doing any algebra work. So now that we know the length of our diagonals, we're able to solve problem number two with, with the theorem that we worked on about rectangles. So let's have our next parallelogram, specifically a rhombus. We have rhombus A, B, C, D, and we're looking for the angle measurement of angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. We can do math or we can do algebra, but I chose to use the theorem that we have just discussed in parallelograms so we can complete our missing angles. So let's start with this theorem right here. And in this theorem, our diagonals are perpendicular to each other, or their intersections are perpendicular. So that means this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees. And how will that help us solve for the missing angles of our rhombus right here? We can use that theorem so we can find the measurement of angle one which happens to be a 90 degree angle because of our theorem about perpendicular diagonals or our diagonals are perpendicular to each other when it comes to a rhombus. And now that we have the angle measurement of one, we'll be able to find the angle measurement of two and three by using the second theorem about rhombus. And that is our diagonals our angle bisector, which means one and two are congruent, which happens to share the same measurement as angle six and five. So that means all we need to do is to complete this missing piece of our rhombus. And we know that this is going to be 58 degrees. And if this is 58 degrees, the corresponding angles in our uh, parallel lines cut by a transversal will give us also 58 degrees. And this is also going to be, yes, you guessed it right, also 58 degrees. That means without using algebra, we're able to solve for the value of angle two and the value of angle three, which will be both 
58 degrees. And now all we need to find is the measurement of angle four. And in this case, we're not going to be using the theorems about rhombuses. We're going to be using the theorem about the interior angles of a right triangle. And we know that the sum of the interior angles of a right triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So by using that theorem about triangles, did I say triangles or rectangles? Triangles, which is uh, angle one, three, and four, we'll be able to find the measurement of angle four. So we have to add the measurement of angle four, angle one, angle three, and it will equal to 180 degrees. But we know the measurement of angle one is a 90 degree angle and the measurement of angle three is 58 degrees. So that means all we need to worry about is to find the measurement of angle four by using algebra. So we will add 90 and 58, which equals 148. And then we subtract 148 on both sides. So now we have the measurement of angle four, which is 32 degrees. So this is why it's important to know the properties of our special parallelograms so we can solve the measurement of the length of the diagonals of a rhombus or a rectangle given by the theorems that we have discussed for this lesson. And for your challenge of the day, so the number bender challenge for the day, is for you to find the value of x given that we have rhombus A, B, C, D. So comment it down, be down below. Let's see if we can find the measurement of uh, those angles by finding the value of x. And of course, by doing so, you'll be able to even find the angle measurement of A, B, C, D. So this is our lesson for today on the special parallelograms. We have rhombus, we have rectangle, and we have that square. And by using their theorems, we're able to find some of the missing parts and even diagonals of those parallelograms by using those theorems and finding the value of x of, of the expressions of those um, parts so that we'll be able to complete our work. So in geometry, it's all about using our critical thinking skill so that we'll be able to find and figure out a way on how to solve for the missing length of our polygon. This is Dr. E, and see you again next time.